Governor's Kevin Stitt, now the first leader in the nation to sign an executive order legally implementing a women's bill of rights. But critics say instead of promoting women, this is opening the door to discrimination. We're taking a deep dive into both sides of the issue, plus the push for similar moves across the country. But first, Fox 5's Capitol reporter Pate May tells us how this will impact state law. This legislative session, there were two bills aiming to address a women's bill of rights, while neither made it across the finish line. When it comes to legally defining a woman, the governor is taking matters into his own hands. We're taking a stand against this out of control gender ideology that is eroding the very foundation of our society. And, our, and we are gonna be safeguarding the very essence of what it means to be a woman. It's pretty rich that a man would feel it's appropriate for him to define what makes a woman. Surrounded by a group of female business owners, medical professionals, and athletes, the governor signed an order that he says will unify laws and rules, spelling out that being female or male is based off biology, and that sex, defined as solely male or female, is assigned at birth. Advocates say this will bring clarity to the medical field. So that it lays the groundwork for ensuring medical records accurately reflect biological sex. Other supporters claim separating biological males and females in certain public areas promotes safety. No men are gonna go into women's prisons in the state of Oklahoma. No men in women's domestic shelters. Today, not only are Oklahoma women protected in safe spaces, in locker rooms, prisons, and bathrooms, but the definition of what a woman is, is solidified. Those advocating for the rights of the 2S LGBTQ plus community argue this only protects some women. Freedom Oklahoma sent a statement to Fox 25 saying, quote, it is a thinly veiled attack on codifying discrimination against transgender women. In Representative Melissa Provenzano, one of the many Democrats who fought against the previous attempts to legally define females, males, girls, boys, mothers and fathers in this regard, thinks this will prompt legal action. I can't imagine that there wouldn't be a challenge to this because when I walk into a doctor's office, I'm not reaching out to the governor to ask him what kind of health care I can receive. The governor says he's prepared for lawsuits and calls this order common sense. Because this wasn't approved by the legislature, it isn't permanent. And it will expire 90 days after the next governor is inaugurated. Reporting at the Capitol, Peyton May, Fox 25 News. And former competitive swimmer and women's sports advocate Riley Gaines was at the signing today as well as on Fox News for an interview with Governor Stitt. The two spoke about the reason behind this decision and the impact they believe it'll have. When I saw what was happening in other states, uh, biological males being put into women's prisons, women's shelters, women's locker rooms, that's nonsense. And I have so many girls calling me and, and, and thanking me for taking a stand. I have three daughters. My wife and I have been married for 25 years. I did that for, I did this for them. I did it for Riley Gaines. I did it for all the young girls in the state of Oklahoma that uh, it's just absolutely wrong for them to be forced to change and undress uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a what should be a safe locker room as they're competing. Forget the fact that they're having to compete against a biological male, but then the change in the locker room, I mean, this is just craziness. Yeah. We're gonna, it's not going to happen in Oklahoma. I, this sends a message. Of course, this is protecting women and girls in Oklahoma, but it sends a message to governors across the country and to follow suit, to take action, to protect women and girls. And I'm, I'm certain that more will follow the leadership of Governor Sit in doing so. Riley Gaines has become a leading advocate to keep transgender athletes out of women's sports. It started at a swim meet last year in which she tied for fifth place with transgender athlete Leah Thomas, who ultimately got the award. Gaines says that Thomas made her and others uncomfortable in the locker room after. A six foot four male walks in, disrobes, and is fully intact with male genitalia while we're simultaneously undressing as 18 to 22 year old girls, and we could do nothing about it. Riley Gaines testified about her experience on Capitol Hill in May, saying that she got involved to protect women's equal opportunity in sports. Last March, Governor Kevin Stitt signed the Save Women's Sports Act into law, surrounded by female athletes who supported the move. We're ensuring a level playing field for female athletes who work hard, who train hard, who are committed to their team, 
who have dreams to be number one in their sport, who deserve a fair competition. Um, I think it's a victory for this generation, and it is protecting a victory that our predecessors fought for with all of Title IX. And as a coach and former athlete, I am so proud of Governor Stitt. The law prohibits transgender athletes from participating in sports with their preferred gender. Lawmakers in favor of the Save Women's Sports Act said trans athletes have an unfair advantage. Those against the measure said the problem does not exist in Oklahoma and that it endangers transgender kids. And last May, a bill was signed into law requiring public school students to use only the bathroom of the sex listed on their birth certificate. The bill was proposed after Stillwater Public Schools declined to change a policy allowing students to use the bathroom that agrees with their gender identity unless forced by the law to do otherwise. Democrats who oppose the bill said it singles out and targets transgender students, putting them at risk of ridicule. Now, these issues are expected to be a major focus for Republicans ahead of the 2024 campaign. Democrats accusing Republicans of trying to provoke outrage through cultural wars. They're so fixated on trans Americans and LGBT, LGBT Americans, and they're fixated on, on what women do with their bodies is because they do not have a plan to improve the lives of working people across the country. There's a push for the Women's Bill of Rights across the country. Over 25,000 signatures have been added to this online initiative, including the governor, which was added today. Lawmakers and state leaders in more than 20 states have also signed. And that was your Big Story Breakdown. You can find more information about the Women's Bill of Rights, plus reaction to today's executive order on our website, OKCFox.com. And if you missed any of tonight's Big Story Breakdown, you can find it all on our YouTube channel. Just search OKC Fox or scan the QR code on your screen.